peace, peace. This is your host, Selah Shalom, and this is the Cosmon teachings and the words of Jehovah and his angel ambassadors from the Cosmon Bible, Owaspi. And this is part three of the Trinity series. And the topic of discussion today is called the Trinity Wars. And these are the Trinity Wars of Persia, Greece, amongst the false god Baal and Ashtaroth. Now here is the wars between Baal and Ashtaroth that ended the reign of Ashtaroth. Being cast in hell, Ashtaroth had a total reign of 3,000 years. Now, God's book of Esquire, chapter 20, verse 1 through 32, it states, verse 1, and the Lord said, The three heavenly kingdoms, Haraktu, Etashang, and Hepsendai of the Truans, were independent, but alliance for offense and defense against the evil gods, Baal, Dagon, Shuluth, Ashtaroth, and others, whose angel subjects were kept in slavery and for evil purposes. Verse 2. Now, therefore, the Truans jointly declared war, to the end that peace might be secured in these heavens. Verse 3. Nevertheless, each of the Truans had charge of his own heavens and over such parts of the earth as was covered by his heavens. Verse 4. For they had divided up and appropriated both the earth and the heavens into three parts, one to each of them. Verse 5. Here follows then the history of the wars of the Truans, or the Trinity. Verse 6. First of Luamung and the false gods he overthrew. Verse 7. A triangular war was going on in Haiti and on earth between the angel armies of Baal, Dagon, and Ashtaroth, in which 10,000 million angels were engaged under them. Verse 8. Luamung declared war against the whole of them and impressed into his service 8,000 million angel warriors. Verse 9. Ashtaroth, the most vengeful goddess, had previously sent hundreds of millions of her warring angels down to the apostate Jews to inspire them to wars and cruelties on one another, hoping to exterminate them, lest they become bald subject. And yet other millions of warring angels had she sent to the Persian city and to the Egyptian city, Daskrath and Babylon and Gonassa and Tyre and Romexian, and to the kings and queens of many other great cities, to inspire them to send forth armies to destroy not only the worshippers of Jehovah, but all people that worship Baal or Dagon or any other god. Verse 10. Baal, on the other hand, sent hundreds of millions of his warring angels down to the earth, to Hellas, and the west regions, and to the Israelites as well, inspiring mortals to war against the east kingdoms, especially Babylon and Descarth, two mighty cities in the dominions of, of the goddess Ashtaroth. So here you can see that these wars are between these false gods, Baal, Dagon, Ashtaroth, and now Luamung. And the mortals, the humans, are like chess pieces for these gods. As you notice how it shows how the Israelites was inspired by these gods, taking sides with these false gods. So not the whole time the Israelites was under the inspiration of Yahweh, but it says that they were under the inspiration of Baal, Dagon, Ashtaroth during these times. And then you still had those who remained true to Yehovah. Verse 11, And the armies of mortals were moved forth by the armies of angels whom they saw not. War raged east and west and north and south. Now here's another verse where it shows you how humans are inspired by angels unknowingly as it stated that the armies of mortals were moved by the armies of angels, whom they saw not. So these wars you see going on now is the same concept. You have angels who are inspiring mortals for these purposes. Verse 12, Lu among the Truans said, I will spoil them both. I will send an angel army of warriors down to the middle kingdoms, to the great tyrant Cyrus. I will possess the oracles and direct Cyrus to march against Persia. He shall make an alliance with the Argosians or the Greeks. Verse 13. Hatchesian and Karsoka shall be my countries, and the cities of Hema and Babylon and Nineveh and Gesakad and Hanidan and Saluim shall bow down no more to Baal and Ashtaroth forever. Verse 14. Belish shall be mine, and the cities and the temples of Hena 
and Maroth, and Hoven, and Torres, and Delphi, and the habitations of Phyres, and Somak, and Mesidon, and Theus, and the great oracle houses of Myrosilius, and Myrosus, and Gigs, and Simon, and Gamma, and Fabian, and Sulus, and Crazia, and Wakadia, and Pahared, and Gemna, and Mazan, and Rod, and Rodi. Verse 15. By force will I possess them. Yeah, by force drive hence all other angels and gods. And my warrior angel shall possess these temples, so that whoso cometh to consult the god shall receive my own answers. I will drive mortals to war in my own way, and to whatsoever place I determine to subdue or destroy. Verse 16. Equally menacing were the booths of the goddess Ashtaoth. She had said, Whether I despoil heaven and earth, I care not. If I cannot possess them, I will destroy them, so that no god shall possess them. Verse 17. Into festering knots and hells will I cast tens of thousands of millions of angels, in case I do not succeed in winning all. Verse 18. I will send millions of warring angels down to Exerces, the Persian king, into his kingdom, and they shall obsess every man, woman, and child to desperate madness against the Argosians, or Greeks, and the Middle and West nations. Verse 19, And I will lead Exerges forth with the mightiest army that has ever been on the earth, and they shall despoil all regions, whithersoever they march. Verse 20, For I will make Exerges and all the Persians believe they are doing these things for their own prosperity and glory, and for despoiling their own enemies. Verse 21, And after Exerges hath despoiled and conquered all the earth region, but all and all other gods shall be driven away from the oracles and temples. Exerces shall issue a decree abolishing all other gods but me, as to off. Verse 22, And when I am thus well archered on the earth, I will turn my legions against this new upstart god, the Truan, Luamung, and I will cast him into a hell from which he will not escape forever. Verse 23, so Ashtaoth concentrated her heavenly warriors into this great and desperate work, for she had been maturing her plans even before Exerces came to the throne of Persia. And since in those days the kings and rich men in all those countries consulted the spirits in reference to all important undertakings, it was not a difficult feat for Ashtaoth to obsess the millions of Persians to carry out her project. So here you could see it was the goddess Ashtaoth that inspired Exerces to go against the Greeks, the Argosians. Verse 24. Accordingly, Ashtaoth commanded her marshals to summon 2,000 million angel warriors, men and women, for the work in hand. And when they came to Niabasa, a heavenly region to the north over the earth mountains, Afloyaga, she caused Matthias, her chief orator, to prepare a speech in her behalf and have it declaimed before the angel warriors. Verse 25. Matthias, a one-time lord to Osiris, 900 years previous, now made the speech, and this that follows is a synopsis to wit. Verse 26. I, goddess of all the heavens and of the whole earth, behold me, Ashtaoth. The earth and the heavens are mine, saith Ashtaoth. I clothe the sun in twine, for it is mine. I clothe the pieces again, for they are mine. From these I made the stars and the moon, but the great earth I made as my footstool, for it was mine, and ever shall be. Verse 27. I peopled it over with all the living. They were my creation, and ye also are mine. I peopled the stars, and gave to the inhabitants thereof great delight, and the earth and my heavens were places of great delight, for I gave bountifully to all my children. Verse 28. But the inhabitants of the far-off stars quarreled because of an evil god, Baal, and they cast him out. And he came here to despoil me in my heavenly places. Witness ye, my beloved, I could destroy him with my little fingers, but he is unworthy of your goddess. To you I give the glory to capture him and cast him into hell and torture him forever. Verse 29. But lest other evil gods take possession of his earthly place, ye shall also be destroyed. Hear ye then the command of Ashtaoth, which is, that ye shall go down to the earth and obsess and inspire the Persians to march forth and destroy all other people on the earth, beginning first with the stronghold of Baal in Argos, where he hath many sub-gods under him, where the Argosians, Greeks, 
not knowing him, call him Zeus. Verse 30. And to whoso proveth valorous among my angel warriors will I give great promotion and glory and thousands and millions of slaves. For when Baal is overcome and cast into hell, ye shall take his angel slaves and possess them yourselves accordingly to your valorous deeds. Verse 31. 